This video will teach you the basics of the Call to Arms editor. This will teach you how to load maps, create units, and create waypoints. So whenever you launch up the Call to Arms editor, you will see this scene right here. It's pretty empty. So to load a map, simply press escape. If you don't see this map editor menu, make sure to press F2 and then press escape and then click load. Click on multi just because it has better maps. And then choose a map from this list. I'm probably going to choose Desert Camp. Whenever the map finishes loading, it will look like this. Or like the map you chose. Now there is a black skybox. To change the skybox, press F6 on your keyboard. And then select a preset. I'm just going to select like multi underscore two. Uh, there's like night ones. There's windy ones. There's winter ones. I'm just going to choose multi underscore zero two. And then to add units, you can be in the map tab and add units, but I prefer going to F3 just because it modifies the mission rather than the map. So to place a unit, click on one of these tabs here, either human or vehicle. I'm going to go into human, MP, and then USA. And then I'm just going to select T2 underscore zero one. This is just a really basic soldier. There's a lot of options here, like there's a machine gunner, a marksman, a heavy assault. Just choose some units that fit you. In this case, I'm probably just going to go with just a regular TH underscore assault. And then to rotate a unit and move it around, click on it with your left mouse button to move it hold down right click and then move it to the position you want to. To rotate it, press C and that will rotate it along the Y axis. You can also press X to rotate it in any direction you want to. And then you can press Control Z to undo it. So that's how you move and rotate units. I'm probably just going to move this unit to a position I like, like right here. And then to gain control over this unit, press F1. And then click on the unit, and then you can set all the stuff you want it to. I'm just going to set it to hold position. You can also do this by going into F3, and then clicking on the unit, and then saying the move mode to hold. You can also change things like the fire mode and the player. And that brings us to our next topic, players. So if you want to have like multiple factions fighting against each other, which would make a pretty good battle, you can use your number pad to control which team you're playing as. And then which team you're playing as will also affect what team the unit is whenever you place it. So I could press number pad 1 and then select TH underscore assault. And then on my minimap, this unit we placed as player 0 is red. And then this unit right here is blue. That means it's a friendly and then I can just set that to hold position as well. You can also pretty much have 10 teams since there's 10 buttons on your number pad. So just play around. You can have a bunch of teams. And to modify diplomacy, press Control, Shift, and D. And this will open up this chart. And then this looks pretty self-explanatory. So you have player 0 and player 0. And then player 1 and player 1. So... Player 0 and Player 0 are friendly with each other, however, Player 0 and Player 1 are hostile with each other, so you can also change this to an ally or neutral by simply clicking on the squares here. I'm just going to set that back to enemy. So that's how you create units, change teams, modify diplomacy, load a map, load a skybox. The next thing you probably want to do is get units moving. So make sure you're in F3. This will not work if you're placing units in F2 mode. So just press F3 and then place the unit you want to, rotate it to the direction you want to, and scroll down a little bit to where it says tags, and then just give this a tag. So for example, I can give this USA 1. This can be USA 2, really depending on what units you want to go to what waypoint. And then go down to the waypoint tab and then click on USA, click on add, and then type in USA 1. It does not have to be the tag name, I just prefer to do it that way. And then in the waypoint section, you click on add, place the waypoint there, 
it creates like this cone. Then you can click on add while you have that waypoint selected. And then it will auto link those waypoints together. And you can just start placing them. You can also have like branching waypoints. So for example, I could go to waypoint four and then select add here. And then the unit will either go to waypoint five or waypoint seven. I'm just going to go ahead and delete waypoint seven. And then the next thing we need to do is go down to our trigger tab, select add. I'm just going to call this one USA one. The condition needs to be entities. Double click on that. For tag, select USA one. And then for commands, we do other actor to waypoint, select the waypoint number. So you could either have like zero or something really high, depending on the amount of waypoints you have. Do approach force, go to your selector, select tag, USA one, okay and okay. You can also change how fast the unit moves by selecting command and then doing actor state and then selecting speed assault and then in our selector we can do tag USA one. I'm going to do okay and all that and then we should see that our unit is moving to the waypoints and it will automatically move to the final waypoint here unless it was like killed by an enemy or something. So we have covered waypoints, placing units, rotating units, skyboxes, maps. The next thing we need to cover is vehicles. So I'm just going to do finish simulation. So the simulation has finished. And then to place a vehicle, just press F3. That will bring up our F3 menu, collapse all these menus down here and go to vehicles, select the faction and then select the vehicle. There can also be drop down menus and side drop down menus so you can expand those to get the vehicle you want. So for example, I could just place a mat V. I'm just going to place it like right here. It's just a simple, uh, pretty much Humvee with a machine gun on top. And then press F1 to see the crew. So press F1, hover over the vehicle. We can see it has two crew, but can fit a total of four people. So four down there is the total amount and then two is the actual crew. So I could now place two humans, two uh, Americans, one, two, and then we've met the minimum requirements for the crew. Now vehicles can work with the less than the minimum requirement, but it does lower the efficiency and makes the battle go a little bit slower. So it is recommended to have at least a minimum crew. And then you can add passengers by simply just placing more men and then telling them to get into the vehicle. And then they'll get into the vehicle and whenever everybody's in the vehicle, you can gain control of it. You can set it to like hold position, you can move it and you can even get it to follow waypoints. So for example, I could give this the tag of USA one, USA one like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that soldier and then replace it with the map V, then click start. Now you might encounter a bug where it takes a little second to move. Just let it run for a few seconds. It's a little weird, but it's just the AI doing some calculations. So the map V is now moving to our waypoints and he drives a little weird. The AI isn't exactly the best at driving in this game. So you might encounter a few bugs. Uh, convoys are really weird in this game because like if you have them, have them to try to go to a multiple waypoint, they'll like start sliding next to each other because they want to try to fit within that waypoint radius, but that is not exactly a big deal. So I'm just going to go ahead and click finish. So that is pretty much it for the call to arms editor. You can get more advanced. Pretty much all these concepts apply. So for example, if you could make, you could like make a map just by going into the construction tab and just by placing some of these things. So just play around, make a few battles and you will learn how to use the call to arms editor and you might actually become pretty decent at it. But that is all from me for now. Fun Huber, out.